Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, pushing the fiber capacity to a next level with 800G technology. My name is Hebe, communication specialist at Huawei Transmission and Access Network product line. I'm the moderator today. In today's webinar, we have speakers from China Mobile, Turkcell, and Huawei will share with you their innovative technologies best practices and insightful opinions with you. Let me give a brief introduction for the speakers today. Mrs. Bi Jie, who is the Senior Transmission Network Architect of China Mobile Zhejiang. Cecil Akin, who is the Senior Network Planning Expert of Turkcell. Dr. Maxim Kusnerov, who is the director of Optical Quantum Communication Laboratory of Huawei. Now, let's, let's welcome Dr. Maxim to start the presentation. Hello, Maxim. Thank you, Hebe. Um, I'd like to start first analyzing the market trends and challenges which we see in the evolution of communication networks. It's always good to keep a historical perspective. If you look at uh, the evolution of wireless networks, we see that every 10 years, we saw a new generation of wireless communication standards and technologies being deployed. From the 80s to, to the 90s, where we, for the first time, uh, uh, we had a you know, 2G uh, communication. And in 2000s, where 3G became popular, and for the first time, we could actually, on our cell phones, access the internet, although still quite slowly. Then uh, 2010s, where 4G LTE brought us, um, let's say, for the first time, higher speed connectivity to, to our new smartphones. Um, but if you look at the evolution of these 1G to 4G networks, I think what you can also always say is that there was naturally too much pressure on, uh, on how the fixed networks needed to be designed to support the mobile traffic, because the portion of the um, um, and the bandwidth of the mobile uh, consumers was naturally dominant in the uh, fixed access and the fixed uh, networks in the broadband. However, if we now enter the 2020s, and uh, 5G is being deployed already widely in several countries. We see that the um, much increased bandwidth requirements and also latency requirements and um, connectivity requirements in terms of number of users, whether they're human or machines, is increasing uh, drastically. And for the first time, we'll see that um, wireless networks will challenge and impact directly the design of fixed networks. Because I, I guess um, all of you have now been experiencing home office for several weeks and you know it is still, you know, even the audio sometimes still doesn't work well. But you cannot compare the audio connectivity of today to the requirements that um, augmented reality or virtual reality will um, demand from the networks in the near future. Therefore, this era of the 2020s will be really dominated by uh, 5G wireless and also cloud applications which go into um, uh, the fixed networks and the fixed access. If we look at um, the network bandwidth growth on the left side, um, I think this is a chart which all of you have seen and this is a chart which continues for now like clockwork. And in the last weeks, we have seen even larger bandwidth increases. Um, historically, uh, we are seeing overall a 30% year over year deployed bandwidth increase uh, worldwide. While at the same time, the uh, scaling of cost per bit, which is uh, the green curve, uh, maybe assuming, let's say, um, a similar spectral efficiency per, per modem has become more complicated, which is also why um, modem developers and system houses are deploying high order modulation formats to overcome um, these challenges 
which we see on the um, um, on the side of you know component cost. And if you look on the right side, uh, this exactly thing, uh, exemplifies what I've just been saying: is that um, we see a uh, transition from the classical uh, DWDM 100G coherent interfaces, which are still selling in large volumes, to um, 200G per lane taking over in terms of uh, the market volume. So 200G is really becoming the dominant currency in the market, whether it's metro or long haul. And it's of course also realized in order to give uh, the operators um, a decreased cost to bid using advanced modulation schemes, which we'll talk about later. And another curve is this um, bluish one here, is the rise of 400G. Now, for now, 400G hasn't really been a dominant force in the market. Also, if you see at the uh, deployment volumes of Datacom, you know, data center cloud operators, we uh, haven't really seen 400G intra data center modules pick up speed yet. Although the technologies are being really um, at the finishing gates and could be shipped to the market. However, this transition is about to happen. We will see uh, a rapid adoption of 400G for uh, cloud data center builds. And at the same time, we'll see also an increase of 400 gig line rates in our the backbone networks. And um, the discussion that we are having today about 800 gig is also very closely connected to the rise of 400 gig in long haul. And um, later on, if you stick with me, I can show you how. However, um, it's sc scaling bandwidth is not as easy as one to three, but just uh, doubling up the uh, spectral efficiency and increasing the modulation order. If we, um, and I'd like just to put this one formula in the webinar and this one formula only. Yeah? I think it's one of the most famous um, theoretical achievements which started uh, the modern communication theory by Claude Shannon. What it shows is the dependency of the channel capacity to the system bandwidth that you use for transmission and a signal to noise ratio. Now, if you look at this chart on the left, and let's say we start our journey at today's 100G with a spectrum efficiency of two bits per second per hertz. If we keep the uh, your bandwidth constant and scale up spectral efficiency to four bits per second per hertz or even eight bits per second per hertz, what is evident that the signal to noise ratio has to increase drastically. And why is that so? Well, if you look at this formula, we see that a linear increase in signal to noise ratio does not lead to a linear increase in channel capacity because of this logarithm here, which is really slowing down the whole relation. And what's, what's much more important is actually the bandwidth. So it's like one of the key learnings in, from this webinar as well. In order to keep scaling the line rates per modem, we need not only to uh, increase the spectral efficiency, but also increase the channel bandwidth. And since we are increasing the channel bandwidth, it's almost logical that the amplified spectrum increases in value. Because in, uh, if we have a limited total spectrum, we actually do not increase uh, the total capacity if we just scale the bandwidth per modem. Therefore, we need new technologies, which would also enable us to uh, think from a system level perspective, how to increase the total capacity of a network and not just the capacity of a single modem. Now let's go to um, more technical discussions. But first, um, I will focus on new technical solutions and options. And then we will see two very interesting case studies by China Mobile and Turkcell. So for once, as I already mentioned, it's not just the modem, it's the overall system performance that really matters. If you look at, say, the transceiver, just a signal transceiver, and think about what it takes to 
increase the uh, throughput of that single modem, actually what becomes evident is that um, with higher baud rates and higher modulation schemes, it becomes more and more challenging to achieve a similar feed. And why is that so? Well, for example, higher order modulation schemes react really more sensitively to laser phase noise. What used to be not an issue with a standard QPSK can become a problem if we go for modulation schemes like 32 QAM or 64 QAM or more advanced version. Also, uh, nonlinear propagation uh, in the fiber medium or the quantization noise that we always have in our D2A into D converters becomes more critical and needs the more careful design of the modem itself, of the components, and of the digital logic. If we increase the higher the baud rate, which is uh, same as increasing the bandwidth of our system, of our module, uh, we see that the impacts that, for example, dispersion used to have become more severe because chromatic dispersion, the impact of chromatic dispersion scales not linearly with the baud rate of the system, but quadratically. So the design of the speed chips needs to become more sophisticated. At the same time, we also see simple effects like the IQ skew. This is something um, which required previously a simple begin of life factory calibration. And by going to, to um, baud rates around 96 to 100 gigabaud, it becomes an issue which needs active tracking in the field and active compensation in the field because uh, the performance really depends on uh, temperature variations and aging or even the wavelengths of the modem, which did not matter previously. Or if you look at um, existing challenges, such as the tracking of the polarization of the signal, operators, of course, would like to keep the performance which they're used to on current 100G and 200G modems also in the future. And here's one interesting example. Uh, one of the challenges here is the tracking of ultra-fast polarization changes in fiber, which is deployed in optical ground wire cables. Here is a famous uh, issue of lightning strikes on these ground wire cables, which lead to faster changes of this polarization. And if we just increase, for example, the modulation order, tracking these so-called SOP changes becomes more complicated. Therefore, a simple scaling of the rate requires really a joint interplay between advanced algorithms, larger component bandwidth, and also an advanced optical line system. And the optimization of the whole system end-to-end -end is required to achieve advanced performance and a scaling in capacity. So let's look at the key technology number one, is the DSP chip at the heart of every coherent modem. Uh, here, we combine several different techniques of which I just list a few. Once uh, we use advanced modulation, which is the so-called constellation shaping or probabilistic constellation shaping. As you can see in the picture, we make the distribution of the signal look Gaussian, which is similar to the additive white noise that we have from the EDFA amplifiers in the field. And Claude Shannon taught us a long time ago, in 1948, that this actually increases the capacity of the system, which is why we're doing it. At the same time, we use techniques like faster Nyquist sampling, where we uh, are able to achieve a higher throughput through channels which are severely limited by the, the actual bandwidth from components. And believe me, there is never enough bandwidth if you design D2A uh, converters or drivers or modulators. Or one more example is the precompensation of transmitter effects in a transmitter, which can be a simple bandwidth preemphasis or can be a more complex nonlinear preemphasis of uh, nonlinearities in the drivers or D2A converters. And this suite of what we call channel match shaping is combined with our AI 
artificial intelligence neural capabilities to really achieve a, an optimized system performance over all links in the field and not just some carefully chosen um, uh, links in the, in the lab. So since this machine learning is such an interesting example, let me show you an example of how this actually works. What we see here is an AI-aided self-taught system. The system is based on a neural network, which tries to replicate how the brain actually works, the human brain. This AI deep learning network does know, doesn't know anything about our communication system. And here what we try to do is, we let this network try to discover 16 QAM modulation. And the, it, this, our AI doesn't know anything about 16 QAM. It doesn't know anything about Shannon or uh, has read any books. However, it's capable of analyzing system performance, minimizing the cost function that you define in the system. As you see here, slowly, it's, it finds the correct constellation points of our, of course, more old-fashioned 16 QAM modulation based on the noisy received samples in the channel. Now, of course, you may say, yes, 16 QAM is not an advanced scheme. And of course, we also use this AI demo only to demonstrate a simple feasibility. However, why AI is so great is because the um, mapping capability of a deep learning neural network is so immense. And the uh, amount of dimensions and the amount of um, information which this network can map is really uh, extremely large, that it helps us solve highly complex problems. And uh, believe me, transmission over optical fiber is a highly complex problem. Yeah? We know how to fly to the moon. We may fly, be able to fly to the Mars, but uh, I'm telling you for the next 20 to 30 years, we still will be battling with the fiber medium because there still be some things which needs to be understood better. And here, AI is a very interesting and powerful tool to help us design highly complex modulation schemes, which are mapped to the nonlinear channel. Key tech number two is, of course, the optical components. So one of the key messages of this webinar is, if you look at the last slide, is if we increase the line rate, let's say we double it, what's better, increasing the modulation or increasing the, the bandwidth? So the, the baud rate of the system. And this simple theoretical chart shows that, of course, as we also seen from Shannon's formula, it's always better to increase the baud rate. And you can only do so with advanced optical components. So you see on the right side, it's a demonstration from uh, last year. We have shown a one terabit, 100 gigabit transmission using 32 QAM over a silica photonic IQ modulator. And the optimum design of these highly integrated components and the matching of these components to the DSP ASIC are crucial for the best overall system performance. And last but not least is the actual system. Because in the end, what the operator sees is not a single modem or a peculiar modulation schemes, they see a system and a total capacity which they have at any given time. And if we, uh, since we already established the fact that we need to increase not only the spectral efficiency, which we can do with advanced DSP, but also the baud rate, we need to increase the optical spectrum of the total system. That's a simple consequence of that, uh, that theoretical relation. So going from a traditional C-band where we had, let's say this uh, classical 100 gigahertz spaced 40 channel 10G systems or the 50 gigahertz spaced 80 channel 100G system. These days, today we can offer a 50% of capacity increase on a so-called super C-band um, optical line systems. And the capacity we can achieve, the maximum capacity with the latest generation of 800G modems is 48 terabits 
uh, in a point-to-point -point transmission, which, for example, you could find in typical DCI applications. However, a line system is a very valuable asset. It is not something that operators like to change every two or three years. Therefore, it's highly recommended for um, operators who are especially constrained by the amount of dark fiber that they have in the system, which could happen if someone needs to lease fibers here and there. It's recommended to really think to the future for the next 10 years and deploy L-band ready systems. So I'm not saying deploy L-band today, but the line system that's in the field today should be easily scalable to an additional L-band amplifiers or rodents. And thus, in that future vision, we can achieve or could achieve a total system capacity of up to 90 terabit per second using our advanced 800G modems. Now, when we talk about 800G, it's, it's important to, um, to understand it's not just about that rate alone. And also, ethernet G is naturally tied to any Ethernet rate. Ethernet G is the line rate of a coherent modem. It can transport either multiples of 400 gigabit Ethernet or multiples of 100 gig E or 200 gig E. And if we improve this kind of uh, nominal capacity, which in real life applications uh, we're, we're targeting primarily for DCI, this typical 80 to 120 kilometer maybe some metro reaches. At the same time, we increase the, um, the reach of, let's say, 400 gig in metro and long haul. And this is another important takeaway message. An investment in two days, 800G, for, uh, let's say, a particular part of the network, is at the same time an investment in 400 gig connectivity in metro, regional, long haul, and uh, 400 gig slash 200 gig connectivity in ultra long haul or submarine, which is required for the future transport of 400 gig clients, uh, which will come, we will see, from a cloud expansion. So this brings us to the very first poll question. Ibi, over to you. Okay, everybody, we will start the first poll for today. The question is, what is the most expected benefit of using 800G technology, in your opinion? We have provided several options. The first is larger fiber capacity. The second, larger transmission distance of lower speeds. Third, lower TCO per bit. Fourth, reduce power consumption. Fifth, maybe you are not sure about it. Right now, could you please select? Okay, let's stop and I will share with you the result. Maxim, could you have any comment for the results? Well, uh, what I see here, actually, it's quite interesting how um, that this is not a more even distribution. We see a large interest in about 41% in uh, larger fiber capacity, which I think if you break it down to uh, what, what's really visible to the operator is, of course, one of the most important criteria of a system. Right. The operator invests in a system, in a network. It doesn't really, uh, we don't really want to look down to the modem level that much. You know, it's about the network. At the same time, a lower total cost of ownership. Well, I think um, we all can agree that the costs of the network uh, with the rising, uh, or the cost of bid for network need to be decreased with each generation. And, um, the increase of um, the throughput per modem actually is one of the most important tools to uh, decrease the cost a bit because the contribution that the DWDM coherent interfaces have to the system costs are 
quite dominant. Um, what else to see here? So 10% said longer transmission distance at lower speeds. So it's only 10%. However, um, one could also interpret this uh, answer as a subset of the lower total cost of ownership, right? Because in, in the end, um, if we abstract uh, our requirements from a network perspective to what it needs to be, then one of the technical features that enables a lower cost, uh, low total, lower total cost per, per bit, is of course a longer transmission distance at lower speeds. So it's a technical implementation, but maybe not necessarily a high-level network requirement of a lower cost. And the one percent says reduced power consumption, which I think is uh, shows us that uh, the audience very likely is interested in metro long haul deployments and of course this is not a webinar about uh, cloud and data center uh, on interconnect so uh, which where so in the data center intra um, connectivity power consumption matters much more because the the amount of interconnects there is much larger and of course the reaches are much lower so i think it doesn't surprise me that um, the importance of the total power consumption here is lower since uh, overall, we're not talking about millions of modems like we would talk if it's, this was a cloud uh, webinar, but we talk about thousands, maybe ten thousands of total modems and uh, the overall contribution of power consumption per modem relatively is not that important. All right, so um, I su suggest we continue. With the webinar. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maxime, for your excellent comments. Let's continue. Go ahead. Let's welcome Mrs. Bidia from China Mobile, who shared the 800G field trial with everybody. Welcome, Mrs. Bidia. Hello, everyone. My name is Bidia. So let me first introduce myself. I am the Senior Transmission Network Architect of China Mobile Zhejiang. It is my great honor to be here to show you the 800 field trial practice in our network. In the next page, I will ask you three questions. Why we need 800G, how we do, and what benefit can 800G bring us? Okay, let's begin. Please, next page. Uh, as we know, China Mobile is one of the world's largest telecommunication operators. Zhejiang province belongs to China Mobile Communication Group. By the end of 2015, our company, um, by the end of 2015, our company have more than 21,000 employees and more than 54 million customers. And our company, the annual income of our company is about 42 billion yuan. Just as you know, in the past 13 years, China, including Zhejiang, has achieved great economic development. You can see from 2013 to 2018, the GDP of Zhejiang province has increased about 49% and the economic development drive the rapid development of internet and the network bandwidth. You can see by the end of 2018, Zhejiang has 45.54 million internet users, and the internet penetration ratio is up to 79.2%. So the rate of transmission network must be upgraded to meet the bandwidth pressure. You can see as a more developing province in China, Zhejiang has more than 11,000 high key sector enterprises such as Alibaba, Geely, Higuishin, and all these enterprises need data centers to support their business development. Now have more than 50 large data centers in Zhejiang. Just as we know, the traffic of data centers is growing rapidly, and the CAGR is up to 23% of global data center traffic and 85% of the horizontal traffic, which is composed of data center in internal traffic and interconnection traffic. 
So we choose the trial 800G between two data centers to relieve the bandwidth pressure. We have tested 100G client service mapping in 800G transmission and 100G and 800G line rate mix the mid transmission and have satisfied results. After the 800 trial, we have successfully discovered discovery. Huawei have used some new innovation technology to improve the performance of 800G, such as SuperFEC. It can optimize the coding performance based on the network reality. And NCG is about it's more than 12 dB. And FTN is a can achieve transmission with minimized spectral grade without compromising performance. The 800 bring more benefit to us. The first of all, first, uh, the capacity of our network is about six times improved, which is from eight channels, 100G to 16 channels, 800G. The secondly, the power consumption is lower 50% than 100 per bit, and the slot application is less than 75% than 100 per sub -box. In addition, 800G can achieve mixed transmission, so it can so it can support the smooth evolution. It is very important for us. So I think in the near future, we will use 800G in our current network. Okay, that's all I want to share with you about the 800G trials in our network. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Bidya, for very detailed ex expression for the trial for the 800G. And next, we welcome Mrs. Cecile from Texel. She will also share their practice on 800G as well. Hello, Cecile. Hello, everyone. Yeah, yeah. we can Hi. hear you clearly. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, I am Cecile Kim from Texel, and I am responsible for network planning and design. Uh, today, I will introduce you transmission network modernization and 800G field trial in Texel, Turkey. Turksat is a leading multinational integrated operator that provides telecom services in five countries covering 48 million users. We are the largest digital operator in Turkey and we have 35 million subscribers. With the development of digital services, since 2015, Turksat started its own digital transformation and increased the investment in digital service capabilities. As Turkcell, we have many kinds of digital platforms as TV, music, magazine, mails, voice and video calling. And also we provide some digital services and solutions to our enterprise customers. As you can see here, uh, Turkcell has 178 digital service downloads and 93.7 digital subscribers globally. For sure, providing that many kinds of digital services require a huge quality network infrastructure. So we continue our infrastructure investments to provide the highest quality and also make our network 5G ready today in order to provide an outstanding experience to our customers. And next, Next slide is about 5G. Between new 5G services like virtual reality applications, autonomous driving, smart cities, etc., will be mainstay of digital era. And that will be generating a large revenue and transforming our lives through 5G. Turkcell's transport network capacity increases 35% each year, and with the emergence of 5G, it looks it will triple in the coming years. So the bandwidth and the cost will be the main problem for network planning. Here, the high-speed transmission network will be the good solution for us. 
In 2017, we built an overlay full current network and we modernized our legacy network to ultra broadband and AGLT network. Through DCM free flex grid optical layer and 20 degree WSS, today we can support 100, 200, 400, and latest 800G in our network. And also, uh, with the full coherent uh, network, we shorten 30% transmission latency, which is so important for 5G as well. What is more, in order to improve network reliability, we use optical layer ASIN for protection. Because of this advanced network, we are able to respond easily to the rapidly increasing capacity needs. And the next one is about 800G trial. Next page, please. As a leading digital operator, we focus on transmission industry development and technology innovation. So last year, we already completed 200G and 400G trial with Huawei in the live network. We created and tested IP plus optical end-to-end -end 400G client over a single carrier 4G optical channel. And later in last December, we started to work on 800G field trial and completed it in February. The trial is based on OSN 98U32 enhanced and M24 equipment and 8G, 800G line board named N801. The N801 board is programmable between 200G and 800G. And on the slides, uh, you can see the photo of the test team. And as you can see from our faces, the test results were so satisfying. In the trial, the first test uh, was 800G, and it is created between Kartal and Gebze. These are the two main data centers for Tuxa. On both sides, we used M24 and N801 to create the 800G channel. Uh, as I said, the channel performance was so good, we observed no alarm, no errors on the uh, optical channel. And then uh, as a second test, we created 400G ultra long haul between Istanbul and Ankara. In Istanbul, we used M24 again, and in Ankara, we used U32 enhanced, and the total distance reached to 1000 km with a very good performance. Based on the trial results, we are planning to start commercial de deployment of 800G and 400G in our network for the next year. Uh, I think 800G will be applied in short distance scenarios like Metro and 400G can meet the requirements of some applications in backbone. So that's all from my part. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Cecil, for your great presentation. And next, we will start the second poll for today. For this poll, uh, it's about when do you think you will be deploying 800G technology? The first is now, second in one year. And then in two years, the fourth is maybe three or five years. The last is not sure. Let's start. We will take one minute for this one. OK, let's stop here and have a look at the results. We find most of the people have select number three and number four, maybe about two to five years. Hello, Maxim. Do you have any comment for this one? Yeah, I think um, the, this distribution doesn't uh, su surprise me. I think it's also very uh, common when looking at the introduction of new technologies. So we have 7% of the listeners who like to have it now. These are the early lead adopters. And I think then uh, the other ones rely on these guys, these operators really to bring this technology in the networks to smoothen out, out let's say the initial uh, maybe hiccups or whatever and make it really solid and high volume. 
And then um, uh, the majority sees the um, horizon two or three to five years from now, which if you, um, we also look at, let's say the adoption, projected adoption speed of 400 gig in the data centers is, can, can be really related to it, right? So 400 gig ethernet hasn't really picked up speed yet at all. Yeah, there is, it doesn't really exist in any significant volume. And it's gonna take two years before we're gonna see really reasonable shipments, which at the same time will drive the need for an efficient uh, long haul 400 gig or an efficient DCI Metro two times 400 gig uh, interconnect. So in that sense, I think it's a very, uh, uh, a very reasonable, reasonable poll. Yeah. So um, I, uh, I'm, I would not be too surprised by this distribution. Okay. So um, let's move on to the last part of our presentation. Um, which is um, the commercial approaches for 800 gig. So we have already seen uh, these two interesting field trials with China Mobile and Turkcell. And now I would just like to give you a, a more holistic overview over the Huawei offering with respect to 800G and related products. So for once, um, we offer the so-called 800G mini MSA module. So it's a co-pluggable module and several of our uh, platforms. As already stated before, it's a programmable interface from 200G up to 800G in uh, flexible steps. It offers an advanced DSP design, um, high bandwidth, circuit photonics components, and the coverage of a full, say, super C band, which is the latest uh, C band technology offering up to 48 terabits in a point to point scenario. Of course, uh, this number of 40 terabit is the use case where you have point-to-point um, -point transmission in a DCI metro scenario. This is not really a, um, a Rotem mesh network use case. We offer with this um, MSA a leading spectrum efficiency in terms of channel spacing. So 800 gig and 100 gigahertz spacing with eight bits per second per hertz. And as, as you have seen, the uh, Targeted use case is data center interconnect. Well, majority will fall into a single span, 120 kilometer or less than 120 kilometer. But of course, is also um, every country may have different data center architectures. And for DCI, there's also reaches up to well, Metro DCI up to maybe 200 kilometers, which we also find out there. And this uh, 800G live network trial we have done publicly with two uh, leading operators in Turkey and in China. However, um, in DWDM networks, there's not one solution which fits it all. And I think it's also a, a one important takeaway. Now we're not designing something which can cover all the use cases. And uh, also a significant portion of the market relies on hot pluggable DCO modules. DCO standing for digital coherent optics. Here we have two different form factors, the established CFP form factor for coherent optics and the more recent CFP2 DCO form factor, which are um, compared to the MSA module, they do not offer the full, let's say, high capacity line rates. So they go up to um, majority of deployments is at 200 gig line rates actually. However, uh, the remarkable say differentiation is it's a uh, well, plug pluggability. Pluggability is a must in many metro networks. And it's also um, a seamless upgrade scenario in two days, 50 gig networks. And one should never make the mistake of uh, underestimating the legacy. If, if you cannot, if you can use your established old line system, there's no need to change it, right? Because it's an additional invest. 
So someone bringing it in gig at the same time requires the operators to improve to upgrade to a FlexiGrid WSS system. However, if uh, operators still want to use the classical 50 gigahertz based um, network, even with DCMs inside, these modules are the product of choice. And they offer superior 2 and G reach, which is almost as good as the classical uh, first and second gen 100 gig, which were in the networks. And at the last OFC, which was um, an experiment in virtual uh, conference attendance, we also had a presentation on transmission uh, of these modules in um, DCM networks with 10G, and we have showcased, benchmarked against um, other competitors and showcased superior performance for this advanced, probabilistically shaped 16 quam. As you see, um, more than 250 networks worldwide have deployed this 200 gig product at Huawei. So we are the leading supplier of 200 gig in the market. And as an example from, from the field, it was a 200 gig upgrade project in France using a 10G network, so not changing the line system. Text grid, we upgraded from 10 gig to 20 gig, increased fiber capacity by 20 times, decreased cost a bit by 30%, and the power consumption by 30%. So, in order to address really the full variety of optical networks, um, system models require leading um, DWDM coherent modems for uh, uh, the high capacity variants and also for low power, hot pluggable. DCO types. And also see that the, the line system is already indicated, evolves towards extended spectra, especially for operators who are constrained by um, uh, fiber ownership. And here we will see an evolution. Today we are at the stage of super C band, which is here in the middle, a six terahertz window with up to 120 channels in 50 gigahertz spacing and up to 40 terabits of capacity. We have here a suite of uh, integrated components, including a Super C WSS for rotems, and also pluggable wide range EDFAs. And of course, the evolution of this is a Super C plus Super L band for operators who um, really like to invest in the say, existing limited fiber infrastructure. The ATNG module, which we presented is available across various platforms, the OSN 9800U32 core switch, the more compact M24 or M12 chassis, as well as the Metro uh, core Metro Edge uh, OSN 1800 platform. For um, operators who'd like to have a more compact uh, chassis with, for example, also AC options. And uh, I'd like to kind of uh, leave off the listeners with this question. Is there a limit for a signal fiber capacity? So here uh, we talked about, for now, 48 terabit in, in a C-band. Here's an example of, um, of an experiment also in the C-band where we uh, did a 200 kilometer transmission using 256 QAM. So this is a research experiment, not a product, uh, with um, 150 terabit per second in a fiber. Of course, the reach here is quite limited, and this being a research experiment, it's clear this is not really some, some, something for the products. But uh, I guess still the basic question is, how far can we go? And are we reaching a limit? So are we saturating with respect to what research can give us? And myself, you know, being a research guy, I don't believe in hard limitations. So there's always a next step. Maybe the next step is not evolutionary, like uh, increasing the rate of a single modem. Maybe the next step is not evolutionary, like increasing the bandwidth of amplifiers. Maybe the next step is really a fundamental change of how we design fibers, right? So let's just redefine the problem. We go from a, is there a limit for a single fiber capacity? Well, which fiber are we talking about here? Are we talking about the classical standard signal mode fiber? Are we talking about the advanced ultra low loss fibers? Are we talking about something which could be commercialized in uh, 10 years from now, like so-called holocore fibers? So there's never an end to research. 
and I'm confident we're going to keep scaling capacity in the system um, for as long as all of our careers will last. So with this, we can go to the conclusion. 200G, 400G are becoming mainstream. We see that our high line rates do not mean larger fiber capacity, since we're also scaling up to bandwidth. And we really need a system level optimization of all the components in this line system to achieve the overall high system capacity. 800G does not mean 800G only. It also means a much better 600G and a much longer 400G. And Huawei offers two uh, technologies, which is the 800G Mini MSA and the hot pluggable, small form factor, low power 200G pluggable, which is really efficient for, especially for upgrade scenarios of fixed grid networks. So let's go to the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Maxim. We have several questions, but the limit time. I select some of them. First for China Mobile and Tuxel. The question is, is in your opinion, what changes and benefits will 800G bring to your network? Mrs. Bijie and Mrs. Sixiao, who will answer this question first? Okay, I answer this question. Thank you for your question. For our China Mobile Zhejiang, after the trial, we find the 800G bring both the new changes and benefits for us. The first and the most important one is that the improved capacity, which can help us relieve the bandwidth pressure. And secondly, it can mix transmission with 100G, which is used in our network. It means that we can deliver the 800G in current network. We need not to construct a new network for 800G. It can also help to reduce the cost. In addition, the power consumption and the integration of 800G have obvious advance. It can also help to reduce the open OPEX. Thank you. Thanks, DJ. And how about you, Cecil? Cecil? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, uh, the question I repeat again. In your opinion, what changes and benefits will 800G bring to the network? Okay, 800G is a transformation trend and accelerate development needs 5G services developments. I think. Uh, there are three advantages here. And first, 800G can greatly improve the single fiber capacity, as we uh, thought already. Second, 800G can reduce the transmission cost. With the commercial use of 800G, the transmission cost will be further reduced. And then uh, the other advantage is it will simplify the network and continuously reduce the power consumption of transport equipment. We focus on transmission to strengthen our next existing technology and prepare our networks for 5G. So I think uh, 800G will be so important for 5G. Thank you, thank you, Cecil. And another, the next question is, is 800G technology sensitive to quality and age of fiber? Dr. Maxim, could you answer this question? Oh, yes, uh, definitely, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, uh, for, uh, you know, 800 gig being the next step, um, you know, we always need to analyze which, which links you can apply to based on the link budget that we have. So uh, there's certainly good links, certainly bad links, and we had it before, we can have it in the future. And I think the real answer can only lie in a real modeling of a given network. So it's, um, I, I don't, I don't want to say um, give any any target reaches for 800 gig or 400 gig because really it, it depends on the network that you have. And if there's some true wave classic fiber in there with some high loss spans, then obviously 800 gig will not be th that much of a you know distance. However, if uh, the span loss is lower and the fiber is good and uh, we can have really decent 
GCI metro performance for 800 gig. Thank you, Maxim. And we still have many questions. I select some of them. Uh, this one is, is there any commercial deployment use case of Super C band of Huawei system? Um, I don't know if there's anything which I can mention publicly, but yes, we are uh, shipping this technology and it's commercially available. Um, and the next question is, what is the performance of 800G in extended C or super C band? Well, you know, um, I think it's, it's a good question because uh, especially when people talk about, say, the L band, you always hear the L band is worse than the C band. You know, I agree with that. Yeah. So you're never going to get the same performance in the L band which you get in C band. However, the uh, super C band is uh, the design of the amplifiers and rotoms is really a seamless extension. So you do not really see a performance hit due to the extension of the spectrum in, in the C band. So you can assume whatever you had before in the extended spectrum, you'll be able to achieve in the super C band, unlike the L band. Okay, thank you. And we have the last minutes and the question is for China Mobile and Tuxel as well. The question is, what will be the application scenarios and next plan of 800G in Tuxel and China Mobile? Mrs. Cecil, could you answer yeah. first? Yeah, sure. Uh, based on Tuxel 800G and 400G ultra long field tests, uh, 800 is ready for commercial application and i think firstly we will apply 800g to core site interconnection in short distance application like metro and we will adopt the new 800 400 and also 200g technology to modernize the network and also there are some topics in the next plan like simplify the network and sites and ip plus wdm synergy in the network Thank you. Thank you, Cecil. And Mrs. Fidia, I repeat this question. What will be the application scenarios and next plan of 800G in your network? OK, thank you. And you can see from my, my presentation, in the trail, we test the 800 performance in our country between two data centers. We find now the performance 800G can match the scenarios in DC internal connection in short distance, which is about 65 kilometers. So we will deliver the 800G in DC in scenarios first because more network bandwidth require requirement. In the future, I think we also want to use the 800G in more scenarios, such as mature network in middle distance as full as performance improve of 800G. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. BJ. Hello, everybody. We have some other questions, but because of the limited time, we are on time now. And all of your questions we have write down and we will connect you after this webinar. Recording of this webinar will be available in several days and you will get an email from us. Thank you everybody. Thank you for your attending and thank you to every speaker. Thank you for your great presentation. That's all for today. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you.